When we were young, we couldn't wait to turn 18. It meant freedom, independence. It also meant that for some, it meant leaving the nest, sometimes with no real life skills, be it sex ed, finances, or general facts of life. Do you feel when you left home you were prepared? Did you receive any good advice? Is there any advice you'd give yourself knowing what you know now? That's a loaded question. Yeah. After I saw the movie Dope, I regret not buying Bitcoin. That haunts me to this day. That's fair. To, to this day. Like, that's like something minor. Like, if I had a time machine and I had 10 seconds back in time to deliver a message, it'd be that. I would catch myself after watching Dope and I would show up and I'd be like, that shit is real, buy it. <laughs> it's weird because I remember when I left home, I left home at 19. And I think in my family, at least that's how the family, I was the youngest to leave home and not go back. Like that, my, is, that is the biggest flex you can have in a black family. I didn't come back. I didn't ask to come back. I just left. Right. And thrived. Like, I left. I didn't go back. I remember when I was, like, 24, like, when I was going through that suicidal phase of life, like, real heavy. My mom told me to come back home, and I told her no. And we actually got to a big fight about things. I'm like, I told her, if I went back home, that means I failed. And, you know, for me, it's one of those things where it's like, I, when I left, I'm like, I knew I wasn't coming back. That's just what it was for me. Like, would, now, would I go back to Phoenix? Possibly. Will, will I live with my family again? Never again. No, I think that's because you're a man. Like, I feel, I feel like for a man, like, it just hits different. Like, you want you want to be a king of your own castle. Right. Well, I don't know, because I have roommates. So, but, but, for, but for me, it's like one of those things where, but like... But even then, like, it's, it's still like a nation state. Your room is your castle. Right. And, like, for me, I guess it's just one of those things where, you know, my parents, you know, they taught me a lot of things, but a lot of things, you know, I it just wasn't there. You know what I mean? Like... I learned how to balance a checkbook, but that's because that's because the teacher taught me how to balance a checkbook. You know, a lot of life, a lot of life skills that I needed, I didn't really get the way I needed to get them. Um, I was like, you know, I'm more book smart at the time than I was street smart, and so there was some, there were things my parents could not teach me because I had to experience them for myself. Right. And you know, it was just that was just the was the the big thing. Mom was like, she told me, I remember she, I was six years so old. She's like, Michael, this is my problem. She's like, this is a problem. She's like, you're smart, but you know you're smart, but you don't have street smarts. And, you know, there's only so much you can do as a parent to teach your children when they when the when the children have to get the experience for themselves. But I know that some parents, though, they don't teach their kids about money. They don't teach their kids about sex, things like that, whatever. Like these kids are walking around, you know, getting, you know, getting pregnant, not realizing there's, there's going to be some real responsibilities coming with having children. And having mummy and daddy is, around is not an option for you because a lot of black grandparents don't take care of the grandkids like that. Not this generation. I mean, I know I have friends who were raised by grandparents, but like the, the generation of our parents, Mm-mm. they not having it. They not having that because grandma wants to go to the club and like, <laughs> come get this baby. Right. What does Samora say? Like this is Grandma Matomika. She has new rules and new regulations. She don't do shit like Mima, Nana, or Big Mama. And that's she don't even get called Grandma. She has got some cool ass nickname. Yeah, I'm a Grandma. <laughs> I'm like, bitch, you're a grandma. Stop playing. Fuck grandma. What the fuck is that? Get the fuck out of here. Grandma, Gma, GG, like. You grandma. Cool. It's the grandmas now that the coolest nickname. I feel it. I don't feel it. I'm the like. Rebrand never hurt. I'm like, play your no, play your position, okay? Like. Don't change the job description, but you know, the little <laughs> rebrand never hurt nobody. Well, I feel I feel like you know like I'm what comes to six in particular. I'm like my parents like. You know, they didn't really, we didn't really have that talk. Granted, like, my mom went to the hospital, so I knew where babies came from. And I know, you know, I knew the basics of it, whatever, but it doesn't really prepare you for the, you know, for real world, you know, sexual pressure, so on and so forth, whatever. So you kind of walking out with this idealic idea of, of like, oh, well, you know, I'm going to be pure and virtuous until I get married and blah, blah, blah. And uh, then. Exactly. Look, my mom's a missionary, so you already know, like, it was more so waiting to get married from somebody you love. And that is not like. And I'm not even realizing I'm not even built that way. <laughs> I don't think sex is comfortable for parents to talk about with their children. But you need know. to. I just, but when I, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. When I, um, when I got my period, my, my mom just told me, this means that if you have sex, you'll get pregnant. <laughs> no, she didn't. That was our sex talk. 
Yeah, that was our sex talk. My dad. I, just don't think she, I don't think she was very comfortable with having that discussion with me. Honestly, my dad, I remember, because, you know, me and my brother used to watch porn whenever we get in trouble. Sorry, Jacob. Um, <laughs> and say his name. Sure did. Right, just throw him under the bus. Sure did. Throw him under the bus and drive back on him. But, like, my dad told me one day, I was like, my, my dad was like, I was like 15. My dad's like, Michael, you know what they do at the end of whatever. You know what they do. He's like, they're wasting their seed, Michael. And I'm like, dad, what the fuck? Like. I didn't know what the shit was called. I didn't know what it was called until like I got one of those sex ed books. I'm like, oh, that's called semen. Cause I was wondering, I'm like, what's going on with his dick? I'm like, I didn't even. Know. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't even know these things. Whatever. I'm like, I'm like, dad. Like, um, you might want to back up a little bit first. You know, l- tell me what these things are a little bit, and then go there. But my dad was like super repressive. Like I remember one time I was like, I, was, I had my hand in my pants. Where he's like, Michael, take your hand in your pants. Go sit in the corner. I'm like, dad, my balls itched. Like, what the fuck? Like. These things happen, but my dad was not one for that kind of shit. Where my mom and me didn't really have the sex talk, or whatever. But she had a really, she had a really, really thick college book <clears throat> called Our Sexuality. It was twenty three chapters long. I read that book back to front, front to back. That's how I learned about sex. No, you were ahead of the curve. I was not a child of the internet, which which usually screws you up because the internet is a place that's just hyperbole on top of hyperbole. With no explanation, I think me and my dad had like a brief talk, like our freshman year in high school, and then it was just more so, you know, when he's so late, like you know, how to, you know, your body's changed. He's like if you just, you know, you get those urges, you wanna, you know, <laughs> talk about going to get condoms or something, just you know, just talk to him. I'm, and I'm in my head, it was like we don't even, have, we're not the dialogue type of family. It's <laughs> y'all, I get it, y'all in charge. I respect and love y'all. Stay out of my business, and I'll stay out of yours. Like it's not a lot of sitting here opening up and seeing like showing my like you don't have an identity of me as a, a man more so it's just oh that's michael my son right like, like so it never it's, it was never a transition of of that with us so it just was comical because my dad is just in this situation you know he mean he want to tell you but it's just like we both we're not good at this we got the internet i'll figure it out like like honestly, that, that... Shout, out, shout out to Pinky. Shout out to Pinky, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Not Pinky. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I want to chime in and say, what did you say, nigga? <laughs> for me, like in regards to like leaving home and like the sex talk and the financial literacy, nah. Because I mean, I had kids young like at 19 so if i could tell myself anything that i believe based on what i know now back then would be leave him alone honestly alone because them them is bad them is bad horrible people (laughs) and just you know if i said like have a do-over the main thing that i would have just did was focus on school and i would have been a bookworm and I wouldn't know nothing about nothing unless I looked it up on the internet or read it in a book. See? Because mm. I've been back home a lot in the last 10 years, almost 11 years now, with me having kids. And then it's like now having three, I don't, mm-mm. I was like really excited about like teaching my son about like the birds and the bees and how to talk to girls. Girl, oh no. Mm-mm. This boy is about to be 11 this year, and I don't want to talk with him. That's what I was going to ask. I was going to ask Kyle, like, if anyone feels like they would be comfortable with having... I feel like I would be, I feel like I would be comfortable. I, I think I would. Because, like, for me, like, for me, it's, it's really odd. Because <clears throat> I'm gay. So that's a whole different dynamic. And so my parents are straight. So I didn't talk to me, talk to me about sex. And with the sex you guys have, I'm, I don't care for. Um... I feel like the important stuff, though, is like... Right, SCD right. Yeah. We didn't get none of that talk. None of that at all. Like... None. And I mean, yeah, you get the STD talk, but it was more so like, that's why you should be abstinent. Right. No, honestly, we got... We, no, no. Off, right? When I was 13, we got the pamphlet. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. That pamphlet with the deodorant and the little things why you get some... Oh, you're going to get directions now and not turn on emissions. And I'm like, oh, that's, <clears throat> that's wonderful. But what does that mean for me? Like... And that was the extent of my, of honestly, outside of that one book, you know, really having a sex talk with my parents. And for me, it's like, if I were to have kids, I feel like, God, well, God forbid if I ever have kids, I could handle it because I'm a hoe. Wait. And out there in the streets. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
like honestly to me there's like there's no shame in my game anymore it's like look you like you like getting down the get down whatever make sure you wrapped it up you make sure like like they say in the um the um what's that show the home improvement when you take the car into the garage make sure you wear a car cover right. Boom. i think i think because like let's say like you all i'm gonna say i'm social like <laughs> I, I, love, I love women like women of all kinds essences and all of that good shit so I think if I had a son or a daughter it's more so I wouldn't know what to say but it's more so I would try to create an environment that's not awkward or uncomfortable but I think that's where like the guarded shit comes from like if your parent is uncomfortable you as a kid sense that like we even I'm already feeling weird about this like I'm, I'm the one going through the changes and you feel awkward oh this must be wild like I'm what? not going to want to really open up and go into details because, one, the kid doesn't know anything about anything, and then you acting like you don't know either. Like, then they go figure out their own or keep it to themselves or not. The ones who, like, just understood, like, the value of sex. Because sex, sex does hold a value. Sex is currency. And it's like, they had parents who were out there, like, even when we became young adults, it was like, your pops is, like, your pops is the legion, like, because, they, but they've had them conversations about, you got to have a kind of, like, you don't even know that girl. Like, I understand you don't know that girl like that, and your body is telling you one thing. You got to protect yourself. But my body's telling me, yeah. Girls that you have an attraction to on a lust level and women in your life that you actually love, and you can't treat those women the same, and you have to understand that you can put yourself at risk in being confused in matters like that. It was, it was a, it's a lot of nuance to being a young man. Right. Even and a young woman. Like, you don't yeah. want your daughter, like, as a dad, of course you're thinking, I'm going to keep my daughter locked in the house and all that. But every girl you're damn right. shelter, once they got a taste of fresh air, they got some hope. They got the hoe in them, yeah. <laughs> they got that thought to them. It was more so it was naive. Like, they think I just out here, you know, just, it was kept for me, but it was a reason for it. <laughs> well, honestly, like, for, for me, Honestly, this is my, my mom's my mom's probably mad at this, but honestly, my take on sexuality changed after meeting my sister. Because <laughs> you know, my parents, you know, they were all you know that you know waiting until marriage. I don't want no grandbabies, blah blah blah. My sister's like, look, Michael, here's the thing. You know, I was like nineteen or twenty. She's like, go out and live a little bit. Because I'm, I'm like, oh no, I don't have a high body count. Blah blah blah. She's like, Michael, no one's gonna know but you and the person you're with anyway. So she. <laughs> and no, random Facebook post you fake. That's that was later in life. Thank you very much. Um, and so, like for me, it's like one of those things where it's like for me, it's like I knew if I, I know true full disclosure. If I were straight, I'd have a whole shit ton of kids right about now. So my saving grace is the fact that I'm gay. And so for me, it's like okay, well, I know that I'm a sexual person. I know I know that I like sex, so on and so forth, whatever. If I have kids, most likely they're they're probably gonna be the same way. So if I do go, if I do have kids, and I do go, I was like, look. This, this is what dad was like, whatever, when he was young. He, these are the mistakes he made, blah, 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 blah. I'm telling you this so you don't make the same mistakes I made. Now, if you do make those mistakes, that's solely on you because you chose to do that. If my parents would have said that to me flat out, I'm like, Michael, you know, we made some mistakes in the, in the boom, boom room, whatever situation. And this, I don't want you to do that, do that no more because that's, that's what we did. I'm like, cool, got it clear, good to go. But it seems like the parents get uncomfortable having to talk about themselves to their children. I'm like, look, I'm not trying to get to know you because I, you know, because we want to be buddies. But you're my parent. You have to teach me, and you have to teach by example. So it helps if you tell me what I need to know about life. Even when it comes to finances, my dad is a budget king, but he never told any of us how to budget. That's wild. Yeah. What's the biggest financial tip you wish you knew when you left home that you know now? Shit costs money you will never ever have enough money like i'm like fuck i'm like mike you know every time i look at my bank account you know i get text messages ten dollars for this ten dollars for that eight dollars for this bills for that. i'm like fuck man like if i would have known again that i need to plan my money out and you know work know the value of a dollar physically of a dollar because again what's on your debit card it's on your bank card whatever you don't pay as much attention to it as when it's actually cash in hand Right. And if somebody right. would, if somebody would have told me that, like Michael, you need to look at your bank card like you look at cash in hand, my spending would have been so much better in life. Like I'm not broke. That's true. Once you leave your house, something's gonna cost you something. Like you're gonna spend money once you cross that threshold. Even if you stay home, you might buy something online, but it's less like. But once you walk out the door. You gonna spend something, right? Especially DoorDash. DoorDash has become my crack. I spend so much money on DoorDash, 
It's it's damn near it's damn near sinful. I'm like fuck. Like I'm like, do I really never, wanna... I'm gonna go get my food. No. Nah. To me, like honestly, I get to. I get. That's crazy. I don't care what time of the night it is. I'm gonna go get it. No, because like my dad, he listen to me. My mom and dad, they were adamant. That was one thing they were, they were adamant that I knew how to cook, and I yeah, know how to cook and I know how to clean. But I don't like to cook. I don't like to clean. So I'd rather just get some. Have somebody do it for me. So I'm like, bring me my fucking food. Like my my thing is like I'm lazy as all get out. My parents will tell you flat out. Michael was probably one of the laziest some bitches you ever meet in your life, and it w- it wouldn't be. Dang, a f- it might be a Michael thing. My folks might tell you the same. <laughs> like I get, like physically like when it comes to like manual labor, I'm not that guy. I'm like, oh Michael, you want to cook? No, I don't. I could, but I don't want to. Like you want you want to clean this up? No, I don't. Like I'm not a slob or anything like that. Like but like when it comes to cleanliness and things like that, I'm like, look, this room gets this room gets one quick. Whoosh, and that's and that's it. I'm not gonna do all the, all the extra shit. That's once a month. No, no, like, uh, uh-uh. like it's just. I'm like it's so taxing. I'm like fuck. I just want to sleep and, and eat fucking you know lemon meringue pie. I don't want to actually have to sit there and like do shit. I'm gonna marry a woman that has OCD. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not gonna get done. I need I need it to be something psychologically telling you this has to be done because it's not telling me. I have the opposite. It's weird, because, like, my roommates, they're neat freaks, whatever, so it's, I've, I've had to step my game up. But for me, it's like, look, I don't, I, I like cleanliness, you know what I mean? I just don't like to be the one that has to do it. Thanks. And my, my, my dad, my, my, my dad, he's like, Michael, if I can see that, you can see that. I'm like, Dad, I wear glasses, and I'm not wearing them right now, so I can't see that. Like, he was like, <laughs> he was really big on having things in order and need like this man he's worse than a woman i'm like dad like like i'm surprised he's a bounce course off of people's beds when they come to visit i'm like he's that guy and my mom she'll clean while she's cooking i'm like mom will you stop doing that you're moving too much you need to conserve your energy like you're giving you're giving it all away for the food no like mm-mm, mm-mm. you wait till it's all done and then you have somebody, then you have somebody else do it for you like but then that would mean it would be you do you really want that no i'm the right. I, no no hold it i was the oldest in the house after you know after the you know at my mom's kids or whatever so it wouldn't have been me doing it <laughs> that would have been delegated to somebody young, else you know, was just trying to dodge a bullet like if i see my mom cleaning up while cooking i'm gonna walk away and fist bump I'm like, yes. <laughs> but yeah but it's crazy so like what would you have told is like you're we're all 30 chantera's 32 um when did, you, when did you all leave home? I left at 21, and I feel like that was like my saving grace. If I would have left at 18, I'd have been for sure in jail. Oh, my. For sure. Oh. I know, I right? I was 22 that when got, I left. It got real dark in here. I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, so we left home around the same time then, Shantara. Um, you, you left at, you said 21, right? 19. Uh, yeah, 19. I left at 21. And I left at 22. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because I, yeah. I, cause I went and did Disney, and then I left, and my mom told me, she's like, Michael, you're the only one I never have to worry about, because I knew you were, you were going to soar no matter what. And I was like, oh my god, that's so sweet. Um, but it's like, you know, like, I just wish, honestly, more than anything, that I kind of treasure the time I had with my family. Because, like, when I left, it's like I left, you know, with us all being lovey-dovey and close. That's the one thing I do regret about leaving when I did. Is that you know me and my sister, me and my younger sister, we weren't close when I was younger, but we were getting to that point, and then I left, and it's like I kind of undid a lot of progress. But as far as like financials and stuff like that goes, wherever I'm like honestly, those things I had to learn for myself, and so my parents really couldn't equip me for that. They could tell me until they're blue in the face, but it doesn't mean it was gonna you know pan out the way I wanted it to. But it's like, but the, actually, the best advice I ever got was actually from my friend's brother-in-law. He told me, he's like, Michael, look, here's the thing. He's like, no matter what you do in life, someone's going to be better looking than you. Someone's going to be smarter than you. Someone's going to be better than you. Get that through your head and you'll be okay. I don't know. I can take that one because I already got insecurity issues. I'm already thinking that. I don't want to, I don't want to reaffirm that shit. Like, well, I've, tell me I'm tight. Well, I've insecu- tell me how cool I am. Well, I've, I've insecurities and you know, things like that too, You know, getting, having chronic depression or whatever. But at the same time, it's like it also brings perspective. It's like... Somebody's gonna be better than me, but I'm also gonna be better than somebody else. That's true. Insecure or not, I do have a high opinion of myself. Me too, child. Like I'm, I'm borderline arrogant, and so, like, and so for me, it's like you know, I feel like if I would, to- if I could see myself, if I was 18 with a full head of hair. God, I miss having hair. Um, 
Same. I would I would tell myself, I'm like, look, kid, you know, things are gonna get hard, but you have to trust yourself. Because again, like when you're 18, you think you know it all, but you don't trust your judgment. You just think you know it all. And so for me, it's like you know, you're gonna you're like you are smart. You got it. You have to trust yourself. And I feel like a lot of people that leave home when they're young, the reason they come back is because they didn't trust themselves or invest the time in themselves to actually feel acclimated with themselves to know that they can do it. Right. I I waited. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, but I was just about to say, like, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Because, I mean, especially with me having kids young and leaving home, I was about 21 when I finally left home. And, yeah, I mean, the majority of the time when I did leave and, like, just leave from being in my home spot to going back home to my mom, it was because I didn't trust myself. And so I agree with that 110%. And then it's like, looking back, if I could change anything... I mean, the main thing would just be not going back home. Even if things did get a little bit worse for a while, like, I still would have made it through because, like, the last probably year has been pretty bad considering all the stuff that I've been through in the last 11 years. And honestly, like, I'd have been better off staying away from home. Right. Like the, like, way, way, way better. Like it comes to, like I said before, like it comes to that point, like you have to, my parents go and teach me so much. And the stuff that the only thing they wish, I wish they would tell me better was finances and sex. But um, when it comes to like real life things, whatever, you don't know your own metal until you actually have to test it. Right. And mommy and daddy being around forever, you can't test your metal. Cause I'm like not to throw my, some, some, some family under the bus, but I have aunts and uncles who still live at my, at my grandmother's house well until the 40s and 50s. And it's like, you don't really get a chance to test your metal out when you're living in your family home and you never really ventured all that far away from home. Great point. Like, personally, I left at 21. So it was like I graduated from high school, was in junior college, was playing sports. Got my first, I didn't have my first job until 18. I was one of those guys. Like, <gasps> your responsibilities go to school and, you know, you play sports, extracurriculars and stuff like that. Right. So I get my first job and, like, any traditional black family oh you got a job now they pension off your check like you got this is where your contribute comes from so it was like oh really didn't like it didn't like it but i understood as far as okay i've been here mad long for free see my parents weren't like yeah. that my my dad told me he's like he's like as long as i make my dad told me he's like if you're, after i turned 18 he's like if you ever come live with me whatever as long as you're in school you don't have to pay rent whether i had a job or not i can respect that my mom mm-hmm. She wouldn't like you know even when I made my own money. Granted, I, I moved to Florida to make my own money during the college, during the college program, whatever. She would never ever charge me rent. She that's just not who she is. And so for me, and so for me, it's like you know I can contribute other ways because you know I talk to my mom all the time, whatever. You know we were you know bondy bondy all stuff, whatever. So for me, it's like yeah, I feel like I, I think it's a good lesson to teach your kids, whatever. But it depends on the child at hand, because like some may not respond well to that. And then some right. parents may just end up leeching off their children. I mean, nobody wants nobody wants to give up their money. But like me, I'm my I'm my parents' only son. Like I got two older sisters, and I'm the only boy. But I'm also the youngest, so it's like you got the least amount of chores, or you got you know I'm a boy. You got stuff like take out the trash, clean the yard, like the super, like anything where it causes you to move around a lot. That's yours. You right. can do that. But my sisters are bathroom. We were all rotated the dishes, which I hate. Like, to this day, I hate washing dishes. I love washing dishes. When I got a job, and, you know, so I'm going to school, I go to practice, and I would go work my uh, little grocery store job, and I'm giving my parents the money. Keep in mind, like, my parents are, like, middle class. Like, they didn't need my money. Right. But being, being, being somewhere as a man and contributing, like, that, when I moved out on my own, I understood that. No, you can't be anywhere for free. Right. Like, and as a, and as a man, I feel like you gotta understand your your existence. Like, it's gonna cost you because you want to, you want people to view you as a man, respect you, and like not look at you like a leech or something. Like, I've never had a problem being somewhere and paying for something or understanding that my money had like it has responsibilities. So by the time I moved out at twenty one, and I got certain life lessons, like my mom is great with money, and I necessarily don't have like the discipline to be the budgeter that she is but my mom always told me if you like when it came to borrowing money if someone asks you for some money if it's an if it's not an amount of money that you need right back like if you needed to pay something next week seems like then you don't have it 
then it, no matter what your bank account says, that money is spoken for, right. then you don't have it. And that saved me from a lot of like heartbreaking years. Right. And it was also if it's an amount of money that you don't that you that you don't mind seeing like never come back, don't loan it. That's what you're talking about. out there that will ask you for money and give you the greatest job in the world and not pay it back. See, that's when it comes to when it comes to borrowing money. I tell people flat out, if you ask me for money. I don't want it. I don't. I don't expect it back unless you tell me I'm going to pay you back. So for me, it's like if I give it to you, it's yours. I've said it at that point in time. I want to give it to you, and that's just that. But I think for me as a man, going back to that, like so I have an older. I have an older. I have a lot of older brothers, but I have an older brother that I lived with when I was younger. And <clears throat> I remember my brother when my mom, my younger brother, when my mom, my mom got divorced. He told me he's like my dad said that when you when mom and dad get divorced, whoever I'm gonna have to take over because you, Michael, won't do anything. And what it reminded me of was how our older brother was because he was he was very lazy. He still he was very dependent on my dad to take care of him. Blah 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 blah. Whatever. And I told myself I'm like I would never be like him. So the first chance I had to leave, I took it because I didn't want to be seen as that same weak link. Right. Or to be to reinforce what my brother said. My dad said I was going to be and I was going to do anything. I was going to be the second and third. I'm like, well, dad. I'm like, I, so it's like I had a point to prove to myself and it was also to my family. I'm like, look, I don't need to be here because I can take care of myself. And oh, that's the best. That is the bad. Going to a family function and when it turned left, I'll just go home because I don't live here. Right. Like, like there have been times. <laughs> of course, there have been times right. financially. My parents have helped me out with things, whatever. But if, you know, whatever. But I was, but like for the most part, I've done it for myself on my own, whatever. Because I I never forgot that. I never forgot my brother saying that to me. I'm like, I'm not going to do nothing. My brother's going to be be one taking charge because I'm not going to be good enough to take care of take care of this and the third. And I'm like, well, fuck it. I got something for all y'all, and that was that. Being, being successful out of spite is always it always feels good. Well, I want to say like, I, like let's not get ahead of ourselves like now. I'm not, I'm not like, successful. This is, now. Me, like, this is me to show everybody. Fuck off. Well, let's not let's not get it twisted. Like I'm not like a roaring success or anything like that. But again, I've managed to maintain for eleven years now, and that's that says something. And again, to my mom's point, my mom's like, I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about you because I know that you're gonna, you're going to find your way to fly, and that's what it was. And I'm like, and and I don't think had I stayed home that I would have been able to be able to do that. I feel like my dad, like once I moved out and handled it on my own, like my dad has always loved me. My dad's the lovey dovey type. Like he, my dad told me my whole life I could be an astronaut lawyer type shit. Like low key in, in his eyes, he loves me to death, but I know I let him down because he just thought I, he thought the world of me. I'm his only son and all that. Like, he's super supportive, but he told me when I was like 25 or 26, and I was telling I was going through, so I had some stuff I had to be paid. He asked if I needed some money. I'm like, nah, I'll be alright. I'll figure it out. He's like, you know what? He was like. You've never asked us for money. You never thought, even thought about coming home. And I'm really proud of you. He's like, I'm, I, I'm, you a man. He's like, I'm really proud of the fact that I, you never, I've never had thought about the day you would come back. And that, like, to this day, that shit just, it just was my confirmation. Like, I had the right idea about this thing. Like, being self sufficient and wanting to be your first and last like resource, it feels amazing. It does. Shout out to my folks. Right, shout shout outs to you, mom. Um, because like no, honestly, I honestly with um, the comment that Michael just made, like which Michael? For, I guess uh, Michael Young. <laughs> I guess about like when I guess for black families especially, when you get that confirmation from your parent that like they don't have to worry about you, that that honestly is the best feeling ever. It really is. Like, honestly, I'd say my mom, like, to Michael's point, you know, about, you know, parents being cheerleaders, whatever. My mom was my, I won't say my biggest fan, but it's like, no matter what I thought I, I thought I could do or I went to, my mom was like, I got you a hundred grand. And she did. Like, if, if my ideas were far-fetched and dumb, oh, that's my baby. That's my Michael. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. He could, I'm, <laughs> actually, I'm getting embarrassed thinking about it, but like. It helps to have the support as well. Like, I left and I was able to leave, and that's great, but I also had the support where I knew that if I needed to come back home, I could. If I wanted to stay where I was, I could do that just fine because my mom's not going to lo love me no less for do make my own choices. Right. This feels great because, you know, when my parents, like, they love me and all, but it's, if you in their house, you abide by their rules. That whole, I'm grown now. Don't tell me it's not happening. It's not because if you if you're grown, you gonna have your own, and if you don't have your own, that means you in mine. Right. So you gonna follow my rules. And my thing is like this: like I can't be I can't be thirty years old in my mom's house. You know, doing doing thirty year old things. It's just not. It don't match. It doesn't match. There was different seasons of your life. You you got a coat on in the summertime. <laughs> That's a word. <laughs> 